everybody, I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees, joined with my friend and co-host Sam, and yesterday was another nice win, again, it's the Athletics, so I don't think you're necessarily pom-poms jumping in the air over a win, but you're 17-8, and eight. you're having about as good of a start to your season, as, or excuse me, I think we're 18-8 and eight now, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe 17, but point is, we're in first place, um, on pace to win over 100 games, supposed to be the toughest part of our schedule uh it actually lightens up at, in the second half so that's pretty encouraging and you're doing this all without Garrett Cole and most notably all without Aaron Judge really waking up now over the last two games I think the at-bats and the results have been a lot better and that's going to be something we talk about today but I think overall the, the the kind of the big theme with the Yankees has been they've played so well and the guys who were their two best players last year by a country mile are either not playing or not effective so now that Aaron Judge is starting to look a little bit better at the plate, and look, I get it's two games, but it was ugly. Like, that, the week before that, horrible. Zero barrels, three hard-hit balls, three hits. In his last two games, he's matched a hit total. He has seven hard-hit balls and two barrels. So, immediate shift in production. Looks a little less like he's in guest mode. Honestly, I think that balk call kind of woke him up a little bit because... They missed the ball. He was going to just take strike three on the pitch. We've seen him take strike three on kind of routinely. And then he gets that ball again and he drives it. And it looks like instead of trying to be in guest mode with the zone, he's swinging crazy in the zone. I actually looked at this stat. Um, Sam, he's swinging at nearly, he's only not, he's, he's only laid off of one pitch in the strike zone in the last two games. I think he's going to hunt and, you know, hopefully it's a sign of things to come. But Sam, I think that at this point, if Aaron Judge can get it going, we're going to be happy. But overall, Sam, what are your thoughts on what Aaron Judge has done over the last two days? How are you doing today, my friend? And yeah, tell me a little bit about your excitement or just your thoughts about Judge thus far. Hello, everyone. It's great to see you all. It's been a long time since I've been on here. They kind of keep me away in my corner so I could just make TikToks all day. But with the, here's the thing with Aaron Judge, man. And the thing that I'm really encouraged about with him is that, you know, you look at this lineup around Aaron Judge and they're all producing, right? And that's not a thing that we've seen over this team over the past couple of seasons. It's been the Aaron Judge show or nothing. Um, and right now, when you are able to add a bat like Juan Soto, you have John Carlos Stanton, who's been hitting incredibly well. Won't be at a hot start, kind of tail it off a little bit. But right now, you have the bats that are around Aaron Judge, and this team is still winning games. You didn't see that in 2022. You didn't see that in 2023. When this, when Aaron Judge went down in 2023, this team completely fell off. They did not win any games. Guys, friendly reminder for how good Aaron Judge is. This is a guy that hit 62 home runs and holds the American League record. This is a guy that hit 35 home runs last season and was top five in American League home runs while still just playing 100 games. And you want to talk about the slow start. His at-bats look a lot better. Um, like you mentioned with the barrels, you just see his approach just looks a lot better. I think it's more of a thing where, you know, he kind of missed that, like, very end of spring training, and it kind of tailed off a little bit and just kind of needed to warm up a little bit. But the thing is now is the guys are around him so they can still win games and they can still produce on an offensive level. And if you add a, a, a productive and healthy Aaron Judge into this cycle, it's only going to be better for you, right? We saw last night he was 2-for-5, had a good performance, little home run to the short porch. And, you know, we got that first Juan Soto-Aaron Judge connection last night where they both homered in, in the exact same game. So... I think that if you get Aaron Judge to this level of production with the guys around him, it's only going to provide you with positive results. And I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing because it's looked a lot better as the time has gone on with the games. People have been questioning, is he is Aaron Judge hurt? Is something wrong with him? No, nothing's wrong with him. He just needs to get right. Everybody needs to find their groove. Not every player in this Yankees lineup is hitting right now. Some guys are, some guys aren't. Glaber Torres has not even found his stride yet this season, and that's something that is really concerning. But Aaron Judge is starting to find his stride. Approach looks a lot better at the plate. Getting barrels, hitting home runs, finally. And you can even see with some of these at-bats, I know that on Monday night he had a couple balls that he hit, you know, out to center field, out to right field, that looked like great swings, that looked like balls that would usually go out over that short porch, that would usually sail over that center field fence. And he finally found his stride on Wednesday night, and it's very positive. And at this point, <clears throat> I'm just hoping that he can keep it up, man. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, there's this variable of Aaron Judge that's just different, right? Like, look, we talk about, let's say, Gleyber Torres struggling, or, you know, when Nestor has a rocky start, whatever it may be, it's not the same as Aaron Judge struggling, because Aaron Judge single-handedly transforms the outlook, the feel, the impact, the value your lineup has. Aaron Judge has one good week, and you're going to win six of seven games. I remember the, the game I point back to is a game against the Arizona Diamondbacks, or I think it was the Washington, I think there was actually, there were two games of this sort, where Aaron Judge has a multi-homer game and basically puts up six or seven runs 
on his own on the team. He he basically just single-handedly beats a baseball team. And we're talking the 2023 Yankees scoring six or seven runs with that offense. When he's clicking, he doesn't miss, right? Like, it's it's incredible, his ability to do damage on contact. Now, sometimes, as you mentioned, doesn't always go out, or sometimes a defender just makes a spectacular play or whatever it may be. Uh, but you just, you know, sometimes just tip your cap. You make other players make great plays in order to get you out. It is what it is. Uh, and you kind of imagine with the way Juan Soto's hitting, and it's, I mean, that ball to center field that he hit. It's just like, uh, it's... He's a generational Juan Soto. Like, he's this unbelievable baseball talent. You have him and Judge. If you get them clicking at the same time, you're unstoppable, right? Like, offensively, I, I just, like, you, you mentioned the depth of this lineup. They just have to be okay around Aaron Judge and Juan Soto. And, and they've been more than okay, in my opinion. Like, look, Volpe had a little bit of a rut, but yesterday picks up two hits, which I think is important. You know, I think Wells getting going will be nice. Trevino has had a pretty solid season at the plate after it was really rough. <laughs> First few First few games, man, they're, they're, they were brutal. Um, but it, it, obviously, you know, somebody that, you know, you're, you, you've obviously, you're a big fan of and, and has had a pretty strong start to his year is Stanton, right? Like Stanton being the hitter he's been and giving you a punch in your lineup, it changes things. And it, again, it's not like any of these guys are competing for MVPs right now. It's just that they're, oh, oh my God, I almost choked in my own air. They're good players. Um, so I'm so excited about the Yankees and the draft tonight and any smoke about Drake May that I'm kind of getting a little bit, my heart's beating a little bit faster right now. So, um, uh, what you gonna call it? So, uh, w- when it comes to the lineup depth, it's just it's just nice to have other guys to, to, to you know step up and take the and take the burden of this offense. And on top of that, Sam and, and I kind of want to hand it off to you with this note: the Yankees are right now like around the tenth spot in terms of like WRC plus, and I'm pretty sure the batted ball metrics they're around you know they're just kind of around ninth, eighth, tenth best offense in baseball. With the way the pitching has been, and I didn't really foresee it being this way. I, I didn't see without Garrett Cole the pitching kind of being the anchor of this team. You kind of just dream about this possibility where, and not even a possibility, almost seems like a reality, where Judge gets it going. You get that like MVP kind of version of Judge that we're accustomed to seeing. Not Maybe not a 200 WRC plus like we had in 2022, but like 170, 160, even a 150. And then you get Garrett Cole back. This team might be, like, it, it, they, the, you look at the AL, we were talking about that a little bit before the podcast, this is kind of an, a, a premier, a pristine opportunity for the Yankees, where everybody's kind of down, it's just really you and the Orioles, and, and I guess the Guardians, but they're an AL Central team, you kind of look at them with a little bit of a funny look, you guys are up right now, you guys are the only two teams that are really up right now, this is kind of your chance, this is a pristine, premier, kind of all the words you want to throw out, an opportunity to really establish yourself as a top dog in the American League, because the two top dogs, which you would consider the Rangers and Astros, based on the ALCS matchup and all that stuff, they're not playing at that level. The Astros, I mean, what are they going to have to to climb to get to the postseason? This kind of feels like a chance for this Yankee team to genuinely be one of those, okay, this is a World Series contender. And I feel like in 2021, I didn't feel that way. And to the 2022, 2022 playoffs, I didn't really feel that way. 2023, they missed the playoffs. 2020, they were nearly a 500 team. This might be their most complete roster since, what, like 2019? Yeah, so I do want to cap on Aaron Judge before I move to the the World Series aspirations. So here's the thing with Aaron Judge, man, is if you see Glenn Torres struggle, it's going to be a question. If you see Anthony Rizzo struggle, it's going to be a question. If you see Aaron Judge struggle, it's not going to be a question, guys. He's still going to get his 40. You know he's still going to clip his 160 WRC plus on a low end. You still know that he's going to be incredible over the course of an entire season. Guys, players go through rough spells. Players go through rough spells. This happens to every single player in Major League Baseball. It happens to you when you go out and play slow-pitch softball on a day-in and day-out basis. It happens to me all the time. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I can't hit the ball. But players go, players like this, superstars, go through rough patches. I know that Ronald Acuna Jr. didn't hit a home run for his first 15 games. Julio Rodriguez just hit his first home run after 20 games the other night. These two players went through rough patches. They were bad for the first half, the first for the first couple weeks of the season. Aaron Judge is still going to be incredible. He's still going to be great. He's still going to put up his numbers. He's still going to be the best hitter in this Yankee lineup. I know that Juan Soto has been incredible so far, but you know what Aaron Judge is going to give you on a day in and day out basis when it really counts in the middle of the season. Now, to talk about the Yankees and the World Series aspirations. So this is a really interesting moment. We kind of talked about this pre-show and what this team looks like right now. You kind of mentioned with Garrett Cole. You're going to get Garrett Cole back. That is the best pitcher in baseball. I think that you and I can agree on that. And he's kind of cemented himself after that, after what he did last year. I think that they're going to take their time with him. He will get back. He will be healthy. And he will give you pretty much the rest of the season. And we don't know what he's going to be like, like on a production level. He, he could be 2022 20, Garrett Cole with a 3-5 ERA and just gives up a ton of home runs, right? 
But even then, that's still a very healthy, productive pitcher that you're sliding into your rotation, right? And at this point, this team's what, 17-8, 18-8? I can't really recount it off the top of my head. And again, like we mentioned, we've been talking this entire time about Aaron Judge struggling. He has not been good at all. Labor Torres has not been really good. Anthony Rizzo has not really that been that great, right? This team right now is legitimately being carried by, you know, whatever the first 20 games of Anthony Volpe was. Juan Soto, Oswaldo Cabrera, Alex Verdugo, and your pitching, which has been immaculate, which was your biggest question entering the season, you know, because you don't have Garrett Cole, and obviously there's going to be question marks around there, but Marcus Stroman has been immaculate. Clark Schmidt has been very good. Luis Heal, as that fifth starter, has been very good. Nestor Cortez, after that rough, rough, really, really rough opening day start, has been really good. So, outside of that, your bullpen's still the best in baseball. You still have one of the best units in ball. When you look at the rest of the American League, the Astros are down. They've been your killer for the last seven years. They're down. Right now, I think they're 7-17. and There's one team that has started that bad and has made the postseason. One team, Ryan, that has started that bad and made the postseason. And it was a team back in a strike year where they made the playoffs off of their second half. I think it was like the 1989 Royals or something like that. They were the only team that started that bad and still made the playoffs. So the Astros are done. This team is done. They're not going to make the postseason. You look at the rest of the American League. The Rangers are still trying to get healthy. They're going to end up getting Max Scherzer back, but they still lost Jordan Montgomery. They still have a lot of young guns. They obviously won the World Series last year. They're always going to be a threat, right? But with that team, I don't really see them. I think when you go band for band with the Yankees, I think the Yankees are a better baseball team. And your one competition, legitimately, I won't even waste my breath on the Guardians. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think that that team is just not very... And they're, a very, they're a talented baseball team, and obviously they've won the same amount of games as the Yankees this year, but we saw what the Yankees did to them in Cleveland. Like, we, we saw what happened. And we know what happens in the ALDS every year. We end up mopping the floor with them. But the one team that I see that is your true competition in the American League, it's the Baltimore Orioles. It's the young guns. And they're a lot of fun. They have a lot of talent. Obviously, these young guys that they brought up over the past couple of years have extreme talent, and they are one of the best teams in baseball right now. But you have the experience, you have the depth, you have your veterans, you have Juan Soto, you have Aaron Judge, you have Garrett Cole. If that series goes seven games, Ryan, in the ALCS, Yankees-Orioles, I'm going to take the Yankees in seven. Um, And then it's kind of all hands up in the air for what happens in the NL. Obviously, there's a lot of punchers out there. But right now, there's a legitimate clear path for the Yankees to go to the World Series this year. And I don't really think there's an excuse for it. You have the team... What you brought in this offseason was immaculate, you know, especially with Marcus Stroman, who's been a huge addition. Juan Soto, obviously, we don't need to waste our breath on how great he is. But outside of that, dude, like, you have a very complete roster, and it's one of the most complete rosters that we've seen, like you mentioned, since 2019. This team has all the talent in the world, and if everything's firing on all cylinders, you get this, you know, supplemental help from John Carlos Stanton, from Anthony Rizzo, from Glaber Torres in your lineup, and even Anthony Volpe at the top. The sky's the limit for this team right now, man. And we've seen very positive results from, again, a guy like Aaron Judge that has really struggled throughout this first couple of weeks. And I think the sky's the limit for this team. And they could they could truly make a deep run if they stay on their P's and Q's. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and you know, you kind of look at playoff odds. And, you know, I know people are going to hear the thing that you said about the Astros and go, oh, my God, like, how could you say that? Fangraphs has dropped their playoff odds. They're basically the like the their their projected favorites, uh, I believe, to win the American League, if I'm not mistaken. I could double check to the 2024 um preseason. Yeah, so the Astros had the best odds to win the World Series in the AL at 11 percent and the best odds to make the playoffs 85.9 percent. They've dropped to a below 44 percent chance to make the postseason. They're projected for an 82 and 80 record. It's just hard to put down that kind of start behind you. We're kind of getting to the point of the season where a good start helps you a little bit. Now, granted, the American League, you know, kind of the fact that it's not, it hasn't been so good plays in their favor because they're like six games back of their division, or I, I believe so. Yeah, they're, they're six games out of their division um, because, you know, so there's still that chance where they get in, but you do feel a little bit like, okay, their roster is not as good as previous rosters. Their pitching depth isn't as good, whatever it may be. I know that the bullpen for the Yankees has become a, a little bit of a concern, but we talk about getting Garrett Cole back, right? Like, and this is even mentioning maybe you get Canley back. I'm going to say maybe on guys like an F Ross because he's kind of, he had another, he like hit a minor setback, but like, this is kind of like the third time he's had a setback in his return. So I'm going to be kind of, I don't want to be Mr. Pessimist here, but I'm just going to kind of, he's a cherry on top. It'd be nice to get him back, but I'm not going to expect it. Trevino's progressing well. Um, Canley's progressing well. If Cole gets back and he's also progressing well, 
you can move somebody like a Luis Seal to your bullpen. In the postseason, if you were to add a starter, a guy like Clark Schmidt, who struggles third time through, becomes a multi-inning relief weapon for you. Luke Weaver has been a multi-inning guy, and I, I wrote about him today. I kind of talked about some of the improvements he's made to his fastball, and I think there is some things to like there. But in the postseason, we, we've seen like Jay Happ had to pitch in extra innings in 2019, and it cost us the game. Gutting to say, you know what, we're going to Luis Heal, who obviously there are walk concerns, but you just can't hit the guy. Like, for some, like not for some reason, we know why, but people can't hit him. I think that's a big component of what would make for a really strong bullpen, just having that depth and having options. Of course, it's barring health, and guys are going to get hurt, so, so having this kind of depth helps you too. Everyone who's thinking to themselves, oh, when we get Cole back, we don't need a starter. If all six of the guys that we expect to make be in the rotation at some point or another before the All-Star break are healthy throughout the year, that's a blessing. One of these guys are going to get hurt, right? Like, I, I don't mean to be pessimistic, but again, that's just baseball, right? That's just life. Um, you know, I, I think the depth of this team is, again, just the number one thing where it's just better, right? Um, the infield depth's kind of in the, in the crapper, but, like, then again, they got, they have two third base injuries, three if you count Peraza, which I'm not going to necessarily count it as, like, a big loss because it was a question whether he'd make the team or not, but he is depth. Um, and, and you know, you look at your rotation, again, you lose Cole, you still have really good rotation depth. You have Warren sitting in the wings for you in AAA, uh, and he could help you out if needed. Cody Poteet, like, all, that guy helped us a lot in Cleveland. Made a pretty strong spot start. Um, and, and then again, like, we're talking about a team that is 17-9. A Yankee team that's 17-8 and eight with an Aaron Judge who has a 109 WRC+. Plus. Aaron Judge's WRC+, plus is barely above, like, Masataki Yoshida and Anthony Rizzo. Like, those kinds of guys. I'm sorry. Like, this team would be 8-17. and 17. We would be in the Astros position. If, if this was last year's team. We saw how they played without Aaron Judge. They were an uninspiring, boring, ugly, detestable, gross, all of the words you want to look at kind of ball club. And don't get me wrong, this team has played some ugly games this year, but they don't feel like they're pressing. It feels like they can play the worst. They played the worst game I've ever seen them play offensively in that Oakland game, that first opener. It was like, that is the worst game I've ever seen the Yankees play. They fire back with four runs in the first inning in the next game and win. Then they fire back with seven runs after that. So it just feels like they're able to get punched in the mouth and punch right back. Even the Astro series, you talk about the Nestor start. Literally the first inning, you're down. You're down and you hit four. It's like four double plays in the first four innings. It's this ugly. They can play ugly baseball and just turn it around in a dime. They don't slump the way they did last year. I think the depth is is, is truly a testament. And... I'm going to put this take out there now. I, I, I hope this age as well. Um, but Sam, I think if Aaron Judge is able to click the way that we know he can click, I'm kind of glad he got the slump out of the way now. Because I think he's not going to have that kind of slump in October where teams aren't going to be able to attack him as much when they have Juan Soto there and he's got more protection around him. I'm glad he got it out now. And I'm glad he's getting it out now. Because if we get Aaron Judge to hit... Because that's the one thing he hasn't done the postseason. Hit the way he has in the regular season. If he has that MVP stretch in the postseason, we're winning the World Series. Like, we just are. Like, I, I 2019, if Aaron Judge played that way, winning the World Series. If he did that in 2022, I think we're winning. I, I don't know if we win the World Series, but it would have made a massive difference in that series. They are one hot stretch from Aaron Judge away. I think this might be the year he finally does it. If this April slump is the time where he just kind of, you know what I mean? Just kind of get all the uglies out now. Get it out while you're 17 and 8. Get rolling when Soto cools down and when the pitching isn't as good because we're not going to have a 2.93 rotation ERA. So um, if there's any final thoughts you have, Sam, I, I just, the way I look at it is he's got it out the way in a stretch where everybody else has been so good. When everybody else isn't as good, he's going to stand out as just carrying this team on its back. Yeah, one final thing that I just do want to get out is there was a quote from Juan Soto a couple days ago about Aaron Judge and, you know, about him struggling. And Juan Soto is pretty much like, yeah, dude, like, I'm still very thankful that he's hitting behind me because pitchers still have to pitch to me. Pitchers still fear Aaron Judge. Just because he's in a poor position right now, has not been hitting as well as he usually does, pitchers still fear him. So Juan Soto's like, yeah, like, these guys are still pitching to me because they know they have to get to Aaron next. And once Aaron, Aaron starts clicking, like we saw last night, and like he's starting to over the course of the season, it's going to be a dangerous thing. It's going to be a really scary sight. Um, that's pretty much the last thing I had for you. So. <laughs> no, for sure, dude. I just, like, that duo is just remarkable. And you look at the Yankees' outfield metrics. I tweeted about it earlier today. Um, they're top three in defensive runs saved, in WRC+, and in war. And Aaron Judge has not been that good. 
just would never happen. Like I, I, I did a, I did a, an article on this. This is one of the craziest. The Yankees from 2021 to 2023, the average offensive player for the Yankees had a 95 WRC plus. The average supporting cast member, one of the five or six most productive offensive players according to Fangraphs since in that stretch, Greg Allen. Greg Allen was one of the Yank- one of Aaron Judge's five or six best supporting cast members. Greg Allen. He's played like 30 games with us. And he gets bounced around the league. He gets passed around the league like crazy. Just, it's was, like Alex, like, yeah. Listen, 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 hold on. Greg Allen, 2021 Greg Allen was a stud. Not he was. On 2021 Greg I'm, Allen. He, he had, you know what he had last year? He had a 130 WRC plus <laughs> on him. He had a 130 WRC plus last year in like the 10 games that he played. At one point in time, I remember it was like 450. And I was like, yo, like. He had a triple the first gonna, game. They DFA'd Hicks, and he brought in Allen. I think he hit a triple that same day against the Reds. My point more so is... Couldn't have been happier. He barely played. He barely played. And it's... Like, Alex Verdugo, like, I've seen people complain about his production. And, like, he's one of the best supporting cast members Aaron Judge has ever had. Like, it's not close. He is, he's, he's got a 127 WRC+. Plus. Also plays a phenomenal outfield in, in left field. Like, he's been really good out there and, and switches over to center field when the Yankees need it in desperate measures. And, and that's it's nice to have a player who can do that. I Yankee fans can't get caught up in hating on, like, okay offensive or slightly above average offensive bats in the bottom or middle part of your lineup. Because that, if you had that in 2022 or in 2023, I think we're in a much... We're having different conversations. We're just not having these same conversations. You're... Five, six, seven, eight. Last year was like IKF, Billy McKinney, like Bowers, like some like just a gross combo. Your five, six, seven, eight now is Rizzo, who when he's on, he's on Verdugo, Glaber, and one of like Oswaldo Cabrera or Austin Wells or Jose Trevino. You the Yankees can now go one to seven, and I'm like, okay, like your bats are good. Like I'm not, I don't call innings dead anymore. You could with the 2023 Yankees, you could look at a stretch of guys that was coming up. You would call them dead. You'd be like, "Yeah, like this is like the inning's over. Like it's finished. Like nothing's gonna happen." But now you see two strike hitting like like you have never seen it before. You see production from top to bottom in this lineup. You just can never count them out at this point. Like the entire lineup has boppers. The entire lineup has boppers. You're gonna get production from every single guy in that lineup. And it's so refreshing to see. Even from a guy like Alex Verdugo, like you were just saying, he hits six seven every night and has a 120 WRC plus. That is the stuff that we've been dreaming of. That's the stuff that we've been dreaming of from like when we see the Houston Astros with Chaz McCormick, who has a 130 WRC plus and hits eight for them. We were dreaming for that dude. And you get it from Alex Verdugo, perfectly fine. Plays great defense, I'm good. I have no complaints on a player that's gonna hit seventh for my team and plays great defense and has a great bat. Not gonna happen. Not for me. Not I'm for gonna. Me. I'm about to gross you out with this lineup from April 30th. So not late into the season where you're like, oh, they're all banged up and they're out of it. That last year, yeah. Okay. Anthony Volpe leading off. Oswald Peraza hitting second. Anthony Rizzo third. Oh. Lemayhew clean up. Calhoun came into pinch hit for Lemayhew. Torres Cabrera, Kiner Falefa, Higashioka Hicks. They lost 15 to two in Texas to the Rangers. Oh. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's gross. Like Willie Calhoun, like Willie. Calhoun. Oswald Peraz is hitting second. Oswald, Oswald Peraz. <laughs> DJ Lemayhew. Where does DJ Lemayhew fit on this team right now? Where the hell does DJ Lemayhew fit on this team right now? And he was your cleanup hitter at one point in time last year. He does not even fit on this roster right now. He does not fit on this. I roster. just like I can't. I, I completely forgot Oswald Peraz hit second on the Yankees last year for a little. That's for, gross. That's, that's disgusting. like. That's, Disgusting. I, this I is. Will, I will shout out Oswald Peraza. Thank you for that like eighteen game, uh, eighteen game sample that you gave us in twenty twenty. Yes. Three oh six. Like I don't know why, but I had this like imprinted in my head. He had a three oh six average with a four hundred OBP, and he had like a one fifty WRC plus. Oswald Peraza. Thank you, Angel Wings, dude. I appreciate it. I don't think you're going to be back on this roster. Um, that is one of my least favorite players in baseball. I like for no reason. I just think he's bad. I just think. He's bad. I. I I actually, I really like Peraz as a prospect because of the defensive value, but it just, Volpe is just so good defensively. You can't, like, 
you can't justify moving him off. It's not like he's okay at shortstop or like just kind of good. He is one of the best defensive shortstops in baseball. You can't justify moving him off of there. Um, and even Volpe, like he hit that slump, and then yesterday picks up two hits. His WR, his OPS is back over eight hundred. Like it's like you kind of like you just man, this lineup is just better. Like Juan Soto, we went from Juan, Juan Soto is hitting in the spot that a year ago Oswald Peraza is hitting in. Like I just went like look, the Yankees could lose tonight, and it'd be an ugly, awful like I'd throw up in my mouth kind of loss Dude, if half, we lost the A's. Half that twenty six man isn't even making this team. Dude, half of this. They're yeah. Not making that team, dude. Like half that. Like I, I guarantee you, there are probably six of those, like nine that you just listed to me. They're not making the Yankees right now. They like they're just not on the, even on the team. Four of them, yeah. Four. So four of them straight up, like three of them straight up aren't on the team anymore. Kind of Falafel, Higashioka, Hicks, Calhoun is on. Would yeah. They make the team. I don't no, know. like Le, is Lemayhu playing first base for the Yankees? No. Is no. Rizzo getting DH reps? Absolutely no. not. Um, Rizzo would have to either play first, or you know the Yankees would find someone. Yeah, uh, Peraza playing third, no chance. Nope. Like, not even, like, Waldo is, has not been as good lately, but, like, I, you kind of didn't, you know what I mean? Like, it's like... He's the best third baseman right now. He's the way, the best third baseman. The way I look at it with Cabrera is, like, he doesn't, like, he, he has a 111 WRC+. plus. Like, that would be a perfectly fine outcome for him. Like, that'd be a great outcome for him. Unbelievable that's, that's, outcome. That's kind of what we asked for. Yeah. That's kind of what we asked for. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, with the injuries and stuff like that, like Cabrera is like if you give me a one eleven and you like play like decent defense over there at third base and you're a switch hitter, like I don't like you're. I take a one hundred even. But again, I'm okay with that result. And again, this is a guy that's going to hit eight nine for you right now. He's not going to hit two. He's not hitting three. He's not hitting four like DJ LeMahieu was in that mock lineup that you just gave me. That was absolutely foul. This is a guy that's hitting eight nine, dude. You you cannot complain with that kind of reduction. You can't. You simply cannot. Absolutely, and you know, end of the day. When Judge gets clicking, which I, it's again, it's a, it's a when, and he got clicking the last two days, and I think it's a sign of things to come. Alex Woods on the mound. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but he has an ERA over seven, doesn't particularly throw hard, and is left-handed. Now, weirdly enough, the Yankees haven't been great against left-handed starters, but I'm assuming again a big portion of that is Judge not hitting, and the Yankees have a lot of lefties, so you know they're not, they're not going to be as dominant against lefties if Judge isn't hitting and all that stuff. All I'm saying is, this is an opportunity for Judge to make it two nights in a row with a home run, and. Every time we record about a player, they seem to go off. We were I, me, Alex and I recorded about Rizzo when he's now hit a home run in two straight games and has increased his WRC plus by like 21 points. So, um, yeah, I would love for that video to be the worst aged video of all time. Like, that would be great, um, ideally. Uh, and, and for Judge, I mean, this isn't like a Judge's struggle. This is more like a, hey, Judge might be clicking and look at what could happen if he clicks. You're going into the series against the Brewers after this and the Orioles. Hope that those shutouts were just a slump and that your offense is going to have some positive regression. Because if you take three or four, I think it's a four-game series in Baltimore, right? Or is it a three-game yeah. set? Yeah, it's four. If you take three or four in Baltimore, you're going to be saying some dangerous things about this team. Some very dangerous things. Now, it's early, so can't win a division in April. Like, the Rays were like, what, victory lapping everybody in April. And then the Orioles ended up winning the division pretty handedly. Uh, but... With fewer divisional matchups, those things actually matter significantly more. Like, they matter so much more, each individual game. We'll see how that goes, but, you know, they have a job to do tonight to beat the A's. Clean that up. Take the series. You should have swept, but you know what? Just just take three or four. Take your take these games against lesser teams. Let's go Giants tonight. Hopefully we get Drake May. If we do not get Drake May, I can sign up for J.J. McCarthy. I can live with it. He's not great, but I can live with it. Um, just please get a quarterback. And uh, let's go Knicks, of course. Let's go Knicks, baby. Let's go up three row. Oh, and yes, let's go. Jo- you know what? Let's, let's go Bills. Trade up to nine. Bills trade up to nine. Trade up with the Bears. Go get Roman Dunes. I think Roman Josh Allen would be one of the best duos go get, go get in Roman. football. Trade up with the Bears. They don't need that pick. They don't. Yeah. If we do not, go ahead. Trade up. Get me right, B. Get me right, B. But hey, that's just me. I'm the, I'm yeah. the one Bills guy at the company. So you know, <laughs> that's we've got me. we've got a couple we've got a couple of Jets. Aiden's Jets. Alex and our Giants. I I've transferred over to the Giants after you know the Brown. We won't we won't get into that. Uh, but anywho, thank you guys so much. For, yeah, <laughs> we won't we will not get into what happened there. Real yeah, very damn no, Jesus touchy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let us know what you guys think about Judge the offense, everything going on with the Yankees in the comment section below. You guys can check us out on our various social media platforms on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and of course this YouTube page. Sam's got our TikToks, Instagrams, all those short form content videos. They're popping, they're doing numbers, they're going crazy. And if you guys aren't checking them out, 
quite frankly, you're missing out on some of the best content you'll get for the Yankees on this platform. You guys can also check out our EmpireSportsMedia.com website where we have our articles. And check out our other social media pages. We've got Giants. We've got Fireside Bets, which is our new little fun project. And we're cooking up some bets over there. We're, we're doing pretty well in our last couple of days. So make sure you guys uh, check it out and tell same social media platforms as this one. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Perfect.